He's alive. We don't serve anything that's going to perish. We don't serve a Savior made of stone. We don't serve a Savior who's dead and buried. We serve a Savior who, was di who died, was buried, got, out of the, got up Sunday morning, walked out of the tomb. He didn't need to roll the stone away to get out. The stone was rolled, I mean, the stone was rolled away to let us look in. I don't know who I stole that from, but I stole that from some preacher somewhere. But it's the truth. Jesus didn't need to roll the stone away to get out. Matter of fact, the next time we see Jesus in the Gospels, what is he doing? He's standing in the middle of a room that was locked. He walked through the wall or something. He was coming from the other side of the room where the door, it wasn't even, there wasn't even a door over there. And suddenly he's there with them. That is what Peter is saying we need to put our hope in. Not in anything we can do. Not in our church guys. Not in our radio DJs and what they have to say. Not in what our pastors are telling us. Not in what I have to tell you. If you're putting your hope in the gospel of Herr Kelly, God bless you. Let me direct your hope something that's going to last a lot longer than the words I have to say. Let me direct your hope to something that's going to last a lot longer than the forge, than the foundry, than Widener. Put your hope in Jesus Christ. Put your hope in Christ. Because that is an inheritance that is imperishable. Undefiled and unfading. We can put our hope in a lot of things. We can put our hope in bank accounts, right? People put their hopes in the stock market, saying the stock market's going to treat me well. What happened in 1929? <laughs> stock market crashed. Put our hope in uh, my job. My job is going to keep me well. My job is going to sustain me and keep me for the rest of my life. Um, Generations before me, yeah, it worked in them. My generation, not so much anymore. Job security doesn't really exist anymore. Scary, isn't it? I've seen people hit retirement age nowadays, and just before they get to retirement, the company lets them go. I've seen people who invest their money, invest their lives into a company, even for a couple, five years, and say, I'm going to be with this company forever, and I'm moving up in the ranks, and lo and behold, something happens, the company crashes, the, the, the people don't like you anymore, you get bought out by somebody else, and you say, oh yeah, we're going to clean the house. I've seen people put hope in their parents and their family to stay together. I hate to say this, but family's not even stable anymore. I've seen families fall apart. I've seen my, I've seen recent examples of wars that were festering, uh, and amongst and disagreements festering in and amongst people, and then suddenly the one person that was holding everything together dies and passes away. The war that was being put to the side suddenly explodes from the top when the family's not talking to each other anymore. Is divorce rate 50% nowadays? 56%. That's even worse. <clears throat> but it doesn't matter in all these things. Peter calls these things perishable. Fainting. And disappear. But Jesus is eternal. God is eternal. And he was preaching these things to people who were living in the last days. Put your hope in, put your hope in God. Put your hope in Christ. My hope is built on nothing less. 
Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest refrain, but holy rest in Jesus' name. I think I got that right. Old hymns. God, that's a great one. Anyway, we are the people of God. We are the promise. We have the promise that God has given to the Jews. He said I was going to pour out my flesh, my spirit on all flesh. My young men and young women will prophesy. They will dream dreams. They will see visions. They will have a relationship with God. What God has been trying so hard to do for since He created the world, He tried it with Adam and Eve. He had a relationship with them, then they blocked it. And He's been trying for He's been planning this since the beginning of time. How we can have this hope and this relationship with Christ. A one-on-one -on -one relationship with Him where it's connected, where it's no different. When the rapture comes, there will be no difference. When we die, there will be no difference in our relationship with Christ. We'll just continue on. He tried to, He had the law set up. That didn't work. He had sacrificial systems set up. That didn't work. All in preparation of Christ coming back, dying for us, and changing the system to where we are the eschatological people. We are the promised people. We are living the promise that was given to Abraham and given to the Jewish people. We're it. Scary, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it great? Yeah, you can, go, you can clap for Jesus on that one. It's not me. It's all there. Oh, God. It's all God. That's the first applause I've gotten in the middle of a sermon. It's awesome. But it's not for me. It's for Jesus. Amen. We are his promised people. We are the promise. Guys, live like you are the promised people. Live like you've got a hope in Jesus Christ. Live like you got something to live for. And that's the way we'll show the world the promise of God. Amen. Next week we'll get into more First Peter figure out how do we do that?